and bring this all uh, home, uh, you'll notice that the model looks slightly different than I think what you saw at the end of this last video, and I just want to kind of walk you through uh, the changes. So right here, there used to be a select by um, attribute. I want you just to kind of uh, essentially get rid of that uh, for the moment. And then, you know, this thing here will be nothing for the moment, so you can keep it kind of blank, but we're going to return back to that. <clears throat> so for now, you should just have <clears throat> something that kind of looks like this. So the challenge I kept running into was every time I tried to run that select by attribute and say, you know, equals uh, parcel ID, which is, I think, what you still have this named like in yours. Um it wasn't working like there were values that weren't returning to me and the challenge I was realizing is that no matter what get field value would always take the value one or two so it wasn't actually taking uh, this it wasn't taking parcel ID it was taking value for some reason and I could not make it not do that no matter how many times I tried to stop it from doing it so what I decided to do is you know, okay, get field value is a neat tool, but we're not going to use it right now. You can kind of see what it does. It takes the first value it finds theoretically, but it kept tripping up our, our tool here. So I'm going to get rid of it. And actually what I did is, you know, made it a little simpler, right? So if I knew, for example, that when we ran that near and we measured the distance to our school those several steps ago, and then we sorted it. Right, we showed you previously that when you sort some type of data, it actually changes the FID. Right? I am just going to very quickly do it to show you on vacant parcels. I'm going to pick a completely arbitrary number, parcel ID. It doesn't mean anything. It's super arbitrary. Um, actually, that's a bad example. Let me do uh, acres. Right? Totally arbitrary. If I could sort it like this. Right, you would see that the first value is, uh, you know, John Baklowska's property at 2048 Ornkey Street. It's precisely this big, uh, but the FID is 364. Uh, but if I were to sort that, and again, just to kind of remind you of what sort does, and I were to drag in uh, the vacant parcels. <laughs> And I'll sort them by that acres field, and I'll sort them ascending, and just, you know, it doesn't matter what it looks like, or where I'm saving it, rather. And blah, 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 it'll sort them. Great, close, it gets you a new piece of data, and I open it, and I can see that the first FID is, in fact, that property, right, 2048 Orange Key Street. So again, it sorts it literally like we would if we were right-clicking and saying sort on that field acres, but it also... Um, like kind of rechange or changes the data such that that the you know record you sorted the lowest or the highest actually becomes in the first position right FID one and therefore we can just use that to our advantage right rather than go through that step of getting a field value and, and selecting by attribute if we just do make fe feature layer and come into here expression which is like almost like a way of putting select by attribute in there and just say hey FID equals one because essentially right the thing that has the FID of one will be the first record and we know the first record is the one closest to the school because that's how we set it up much easier so then we have our first record here and make sure you give it a name like first record in the output layer therefore we don't have select by attribute anymore we don't have get field you know even though you know it's there and we can take this Select it to our copy feature. And the other change I made here so that we could see it <coughs> is I actually saved this, you know, in a folder, and I gave it the name final parcel percent value percent. So that's what I'd recommend doing, saving it somewhere, and then again giving it the name final parcel percent value percent. So with that. Let's actually show, you know, I left the last video off saying that this is going to run us into a small problem here. Let's uh, start iterating, but it's not going to give us exactly what we want, right? So if we move to our iteration, let's 
you know, start it simple and just do three iterations to start. Um, and this is where we use the trick we learned in the last video where we say, okay, you here, final parcel, you were the product of everything. You were the chosen parcel. And because of that, the next time we do this operation, you need to be the one that does the select by attribute, right? You need to be the one from whom we measure your distance. So I'll connect you back and you become a feedback variable, right? And I can go here to properties and see, there we go, feedback variable, perfect. Um, also same with you, right? We want the vacant land to diminish itself. So we'll say that kind of new vacant land, right? That we selected and then made a feature layer. You also kind of turn yourself in uh, so that vacant land gets shorter and shorter as time goes on. And so if I save it, uh, sometimes this doesn't work. I'll try to hit add to display, but definitely this uh, has presented problems in the past, but add to display, save, and then run it. Uh, it'll do its thing, bloopity, blabity, bloopity, bloop, run through kind of each step. Hit close. Sometimes, like I said, it doesn't show, but again, if you saved it, just go to wherever you saved it in, Right, so I saved it um, here as final parcels, and I can kind of drag them in. One, I think they're coming in like green. That one came in purple. That one came in pink. So let me turn them all to like a red that's easy to see. Red. 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 There we go, right? It's iteratively starting to move through. And I can turn vacant parcels on and off to see what the last selection um, you know, was. It's starting to cut off the land piece by piece. Right? We started here, then we drew one, then we drew another, then we drew that. Um, I can like see my, my eligible lots, right? That's what's left after the third one. This is what was left after the second one, and so on and and so forth. Um but the challenge is, right, I could do this for five or I could do it for ten, but at the end I'd still be left with, like, everything in its own individual lot, right? The first parcel and all the individual ones. And I, again, want it to be in one single layer, right? I want everything to be merged together so that I just have effectively one giant layer that is all of my vacant parcels. And in order to do that, you almost actually have to step outside of the current model that you exist in. And here's how you do that. Save everything. And right click, <coughs> excuse me, and I want you to create a model only tool called collect values. And we're going to have collect values exist kind of right off here to the side. It's like the last thing we do as a tool. And I'm almost going to have the values like sticking out over here uh, because it's, it's the end of our tool. The purpose of collect values is basically right there in the name. And again, I got there by right click, model only tool. It almost allows you to like, uh, as you're moving through the iterator, it allows you to essentially like step out of the loop, step out of the loop, step out of the loop. And it almost stores them in this like stasis. You know, if you imagine this is like time travel, imagine each time your double gets to this point, you could step out and kind of wait here. And then your next version could step out and wait here. And then eventually we'll take you outside of the model. Collect values is the tool that essentially allows your um, outputs to both be reused again but then also be stored for later use. So this way I'm storing the first parcel, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, for some kind of an input into a collective tool. So I would say you are the input values. <clears throat> I would save you. Maybe come up here to four and make you uh, five. You know, we'll try to do a bigger one now. Save everything. <clears throat> Come on up here where it says model and delete intermediate data. Save everything. All right, so nothing's changed from what the model recently was. We're still connecting our feedback loops. We've changed this to five. We simply stepped out to something that's called collect values. Now, I'm going to save it really quick. And now we actually need to create a new 
model because this is going to be nested within that. So I'll create a new model which I'll call main model. Exit out. Come on over here, call it main model. And I'll go to edit that. And really what I would do is simply just drag the submodel there. Now, when I first did it, it's not 100% useful. It tells me that it's going to run its process, but I don't have anything to interact with, you know, which I kind of need if I'm going to make this operational. And it's a really easy fix. It's just sort of like a muscle memory thing. Whenever you're making a submodel that you want to bring into something else, whatever the final output is, right, that collective value that's going to go into something else, it needs to be derived. And in order to do that, you right click and you model parameter. If I right click that and model parameter and then save, now if I try to do the same operation, drag in the submodel, because it's a derived parameter, there it is, it's hanging out. So that's what's happening. It's like literally this is, um, you know, like uh, I'm just thinking sci-fi movies right now. I don't know why. This made me think of Primer, and now they're going to make me think of Men in Black. Right? Remember, they look inside of uh, the dog's necklace, and it's like a whole small other universe inside there, universes within universes. That's what this is. This little thing here that says submodel is everything you just built. It's going to run five iterations doing all the processes we asked it to, each iteration, it's going to store a value here. Final parcel 1, final parcel 2, final parcel 3, final parcel 4, final parcel 5. And when it's done, it's going to pass those out. Five values waiting for us to do something with them. And so what we can do is actually just like merge and create that final file. We'll drag our merge in. We'll merge them all together. And for good measure, maybe we'll bring in the, you know, that original parcel, too, and we'll merge that. All right, so we have all, oh, I guess it's not going to let me do it. Uh, probably because it's part of the other model. Maybe it would have had to make a feature layer. So for now, we'll just uh, merge the other ones and not our new parcel. So we'll merge that. We'll save this in a place that makes sense to us. Come up here and say, um, you know, wherever you're saving your data for today, come in here and just say final lots. Hit OK, hit save, and run it. Right, it's running everything in the submodel time and time and time and time, and only when it's finished the submodel will it pass to the output values, which will then go into merge, knock themselves out. Again, sometimes when you tell someone to add a display, it doesn't listen to you at first, or you forget like me. But if you click Add to Display, there they are, our five final lots chosen for us. And we can actually see why that worked and how it, it worked. So hopefully in your uh, sub-model, you, um, the original one here when we were having these eligible lots, you know, hopefully you had them saved somewhere. And... You know, I saved mine here. So there they are, my five eligible lots. I'm going to drag them in. It's going to look like a lot of information at first, uh, but we're going to kind of walk through it time by time to show you how this tool worked. All right, so I'm going to make my school a little bigger so we can always see it. Get these things in order. And walk through. All right, so here we started with this. In order to pick my lot, right, and then we ended with these lots. So I started with this kind of pinkish one here, and then I had to draw a buffer and then factor out lots. So I picked my first one. I'm not sure which one of these it was. I think it's this one, but I picked my first one from these piles, and then each of them measured their distance. All right, and I can take a look each of them measured their distance. One of them was the shortest, and it happened to be that, right? And so therefore, as you can see, that's the red one. That red one was chosen. Excellent. So then I ran the process again. That red one would have had to measure a distance of 200 around it and factor those out. And it did, right? Around that, it factored them out. And then I can look at these eligible lots, and I can scroll over and see kind of their distance and find which one was the shortest. You know, the only challenge would be if there's an exact tie. 
But there isn't. There it was. That was the one that was closest. So that became the next lot that I cited. And therefore, if that was the next lot, then the next iteration of lots, boom, would be not able to pick any of those. But notice it's remembering, right? Each time it's successively growing. And then same thing. I would look at these lots. I would come in. I would scroll all the way over. Find which one was the lowest. And there it is. The next red lot that was the lowest just waiting for me right there. And since that was the next lot, couldn't factor anything around that. Then it would pick the fifth lot. And right, if I ran it again, it would factor out kind of the lots from the fifth one. So that is how this tool runs. A number of different processes to watch over these last four videos. Um, you know, how you do feedback loops, how you use get field, how you collect values and then spit them back out uh, into a master model here. Um, all right, so I'll send you an email to remind you, but your homework uh, for any time we have videos like this is simply I need to see that you can recreate this model in particular. So you need to build this for me and then share it with me in a fashion that works. See you next week.